You know, I don't usually like to do the book haul and the monthly wrap up back to back, but you know, I was on vacation and this is what I had time for. So let's go ahead guys and wrap up the month of April. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike back with another monthly wrap-up. This time, it's going to be for the month of April. We're going to do all kinds of things, including the book of the month, which is a very, very close race. I might change my mind before I get to it in this very video. So we're going to find out what happens. But let's begin. As per usual, guys, let's talk about what I read in April. Now, I read three manga, and I read seven books. So if you don't want to count manga, that's fine. We'll say I read seven books. The three manga were obviously Berserk number 32, 33 and 34. So yes, those of you that have been very, very patient waiting for me to continue with my ARC reviews of those, that will be volume 35 is going to be the end of the Falcon of the Millennium Empire ARC. So I do say uh, be careful what you wish for on that because uh, it's it's probably my least favorite ARC yet, but we'll talk about why when I get there. Don't, don't jump on me too hard yet. So let's go ahead and talk about those books now. I'll kind of elaborate on each one as I go here. I finished to Green Angel Tower Part 2, a.k.a. Storm, by Tad Williams. Yes, uh, it was released as a Part 1 and Part 2, so I count it as a separate book. We did that for a channel read-along, and I thought the best way, since it was the most massive book I've ever seen in my life, I figured it was the best thing to do. It was to split that out over two months, March and April, and it seemed to be very, very much welcomed by the people that were on that read-along. So a uh, great, great ending to that story. I thought it was one of those where, uh, you know, the last 200 pages, I was like... There's no way he can wrap all this up. Not only does he do it, he does it in a very, very satisfying way. And uh, yeah, I said so when I did review it and kind of talked about the uh, the series overall, Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn. Very, very underrated. So a very, 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 very good final act in that story there. So uh, yeah, that made the, the month off to a slamming, slamming good start. And that continued when I went back into the multiverse and I talked about, uh, or I'm sorry, when I read Insomnia before I talked about it, Insomnia by Stephen King. This is one I wasn't sure when I was going to do, but when I did Dolores Claiborne in March, just kind of said, okay, I feel like I've taken a long enough break now from the multiverse. I want to get back to it because I missed me some Stephen King, which led me to reading two books this month. But Insomnia, a book I feel like uh, has become very underrated by King fans over time, especially us Dark Tower fans. Now, if you're a big fan of Dark Tower, there's so much stuff in that book that will make so much more sense to you because the first time I read it, it's before I read Dark Tower. This time, it was so much more rewarding having read The Dark Tower. And it actually, things that had actually bothered me about certain events in books, mostly book seven about Dark Tower, I feel like uh, you get some answers to that here. So it was very, very nice to go back to. So this time around, we're doing that read on the Discord of The Dark Tower, one per month now. Uh, I think that's going to have a nice rewards once we get to the end of that Path of Beam and see The Dark Tower. You know, see some of the events from Insomnia kind of play into that, and it'll be a great time. But speaking of Dark Tower, I also did Dark Tower 4, which is Wizard and Glass. Uh, probably the most divisive book in the fandom, because people either absolutely love it or they tap out on this book. Me... I liked it the first time around. I loved it this time. So, you know, knowing that you're going into that book, knowing that 85% plus of it is going to be a flashback and not the main journey, uh, I think that helps quite a bit. But again, there's so much foreshadowing in that flashback, guys, to stuff that hasn't happened in the Dark Tower yet that it's very, very cool. So, uh, yeah, very fun to go back and uh, and do that one again. And I'm, I'm enjoying now. I'm going to uh, run through the Dark Tower in the next couple of months complete that reread of the tower because there's so many things to learn on a reread of that and then the new john gwynn hunger of the gods what can i say john gwynn just continues to be automatic for me he's nine for nine now the guy does not miss and then uh, i did three books from r.a salvatore this of course is the first time i have dipped into the legend of drist smell i've started saying drist because uh i don't know I think sometimes I saw Dritz and sometimes I say Drist. So uh, you guys are just going to have to put up with that for me. I'm just, I'm not really sure how I feel about it yet. So just kind of however it comes out. When I'm reading it now, I am saying Drist. But I think I got so used to saying Dritz on camera, I'm still saying Dritz. But when I'm reading it, I'm saying Drist. I don't know how the audiobook guy uh, says it. So 
Uh, who knows? But I did read uh, Exile, uh, Sojourn, and uh, Homeland was the first one, the, uh, a.k.a. the Dark Elf trilogy, and I liked it a lot. Uh, I, I felt like Homeland was very much like the origin coming-of-age story that you know I love in fantasy. Exile was very much the adventure, you know, the on-the-run kind of story with just some crazy good action scenes. And then Sojourn I was kind of mixed on. wasn't bad. It just didn't, it didn't touch the first two. And then I felt almost like if um, if R.A. Salvatore was writing for a, a monthly magazine, that's what it felt like. And at the end of the year, they took that magazine, all those, and just put them into one story. Because it, did, it didn't really feel cohesive. It felt like, you know, a series of different adventures uh, in very much in an episodic kind of way. But again, uh, a lot of people told me that's because they had to, since it was written after Icewind Dale, which is books four, five, and six of Legend of Druids, that uh, they just had to, he had to, uh, Salvatore just had to get Driss to Icewind Dale. And so that's why that last book kind of feels like that. But we'll see. I did really enjoy my time there. And that's what I read in the month of April, guys. A very, very good month. Uh, I can't say I disliked anything that I read this month. I had a great, great time enjoying this new reading freedom that I have uh, get, put myself in a position to enjoy now. So uh, I'm very, very happy uh, with what I read in the month of April. But there can only be one guy, so let's go ahead and talk about the book of the month for April. And I wasn't kidding when I said that this one was very, very close because I have three books here that could win this. Now, if this is your first time finding the channel or if you're new to the channel, uh, when I do my book of the month, I do not count anything that, I have re that I'm rereading, something I've read before. Now, I've read Wizard and Glass and I have read Insomnia before, so those two do not count for this. So this came down to three books. First, I'm going to say Homeland from R.A. Salvatore because uh, that one, why I put that a little bit over Exiles because it does have that coming of age element that I really, really enjoy. I love the student and the teacher kind of stuff in that. Really, really good stuff. Even though, you know, two had more Guinevere in it, which is already one of my favorite animal companions. But I got to say, Homeland just barely edges that one out. The uh, second book is going to be uh, To Green Angel Tower. Obviously, Tad Williams. I love Journeys in, especially when it is a satisfying conclusion, right? So, uh, either one of those on any other month would have been my book of the month, guys, but I got to go with option number three, which is Hunger of the Gods by Mr. Gwen. Because this guy, there is no uh, middle book syndrome with it. Sometimes with a trilogy, you'll get that middle book syndrome. It's not a problem here, guys. I'm happy to say I think this one is better than Shadow of the Gods. It really, really is. So it was something I didn't think that he could do because the thing with John is he does have no problems killing off his characters. And some characters I really did like died in that first book, and I was kind of bummed out about that. But with this, uh, new characters kind of take center stage. There's two new POV characters, which uh, uh, one is one that you learn to love and one is one that you love to hate. But it is kind of almost in like a redemption tour kind of way with one of those POV characters. So uh, I'm here for that redemption tour. I, I think that yeah, he's, he's a talented enough author, I think to fully do that uh, that redemption arc with a character that may seem irredeemable after stuff he did in book one. However, John's also a notorious rug puller, so he can make you think he's going one way and he's going to do it the other way. But uh, I, what I what I told uh, uh, the brothers, Gwen, as I was talking to them, and I told them, hey, I really like your pop's new book, but tell him I'm not on speaking terms with him right now because of the ending of this. So I'll just let you guys know the ending of this is a... Yeah, it's it's wild, guys. But again, the hits never stop coming with this book. The guy just writes. If you are, it is possible to write a fantasy thriller. I think that this guy does it. I don't know how he writes these big, massive books like this, and you will fly through them in three days. It's only three days to read this, guys. It's so good. You can't stop reading. He writes those quick, snappy chapters, and you just can't stop. You just want to find out what happens next. And uh I think he's becoming a more and more talented writer as well. And guys, if you're just all into like Last Kingdom and Vikings and stuff like that and God of War, the new God of War, does any of that Norse uh, traditional Scandinavia stuff, man, you're going to be just absolutely loving this series. So uh, I can't wait to see how he finishes off this trilogy. I'm very, very excited. I am kind of in the same place I was with the first one. I was like, man, you're killing all these characters I like, but I have confidence in John that he's going to bring in some new characters or some characters have kind of been in the background up this point, bring them to the forefront and make you like them just as much. And to me, that just means the guy is amazing at writing characters. And John, you are amazing, my friend. Do not stop doing this ever. I can't wait to see how this concludes. So book of the month, for April, guys, Hunger of the Gods. And it's very much in contention for my cover 
of the year. Look at that bad boy. This is great stuff, man. Fantasy has the best covers, don't they? It's just not even close to me. So, Book of the Month is down. Let's go ahead and talk about a little channel growth here. I know this is some people's least favorite part of this video, so I do have timestamps below if you guys want to skip this section. Feel free. I'll try to keep it brief. Uh, I think that uh, some things we talked about in previous months, I'm not going to keep kind of recurgitating them. I do feel like the channel has been throttled a little bit, but again, uh, I kinda, all I can do really is look at the data here. That's what I'm doing. Uh, 1,131 new subscribers in the month of April. That is down 176 from May. Or sorry, March. So it's uh, yeah, it does continue to seem like it's dwindling uh, somewhat there. Forty-four thousand hours of watch time. That's actually up four thousand from March, and two hundred and sixty-five thousand views up nine thousand from March. So it seems like the subscribers are dwindling, but it seems like the views and the uh, the actual watch time engagement is actually kind of rebounding a little bit. So as a creator, that's kind of what you want to see. Sure, subscribers are nice, but if those subscribers aren't watching your content doesn't really matter. So uh, I, I'm not really sure what's going on with that either way. I do know that YouTube did finally grant me a super thanks button that I had been requesting. I had no idea why they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't give me an answer for it. So that makes me hope that maybe this uh, supposed, uh, the suspected shadow banning that I thought that I got, maybe perhaps, uh, you know, it has been lifted or it was all in my head. You know, it could have been. I don't know. I still get so many people that message me and say, I'm not getting notifications about your new videos anymore. I just have to check your channel every day and see if you have a new video out. Oh, I can help you with that, guys. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday usually is what I'm putting videos out on. Uh, I was on vacation this week, so that's why it was Friday and Saturday this past week. But for the most part, it's going to be Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday is going to be my schedule. So if you're not getting those notifications, yes, please do check to make sure that I don't have anything out, anything new. So yeah, another uh, interesting month, but uh, I feel like spring has been hard on a lot of content creators this year. So I think it's changes at YouTube. I want to, I want to believe that because I don't feel like I've done anything wrong to really uh, earn the ire of our, our, our content creator overlords. So uh, we'll see. We'll see. Let's go ahead and move along, guys. Let's talk about some most popular content for the month of April. 16 videos this month, which is actually kind of amazing, guys, when you consider that we had Easter, that I had a camping trip with my kids for scouts, and we just had a family vacation. So the fact that I was able to get 16 videos out during that time, I, I don't know. Uh, hey, it's almost like my hair would fall out or something. Weird, huh? All right, let's go ahead and talk about the uh, the most popular ones, though. The five most watched videos this month. Um, obviously, guys, book haul. March 2022 book haul. That seems like it's always going to be the most popular video each month. People just love to see new books that you got. I love those videos because it creates conversation. Books I've never read before. In the comments, people will be like, oh, man, that series, you know, is slamming or huh? I don't know. I don't know if that's really going to click for you. I listen to all that feedback. I really do appreciate those things. So that's what I love about the book hauls, but people love seeing, you know, like I said, yeah, how they shape up, what the covers are like, things like that, if the spines match. These are things very important to book collectors, you know, and I am one, so I love to be able to share that and obviously say thank you to the wonderful, amazing people who continue to send me stuff each month. You guys are the best and I value you like you cannot ever know. Uh, 10 new series I'd like to begin in 2023. Uh, just like the book haul, this one also got 10,000 views. The book haul got a little bit more. Uh, 10,000 views. People, if there's one thing that people on this channel that they love in this audience, uh, but they love for me to do is to talk about what I'm going to read instead of what I've actually read. Uh, because when I talk about new series, it's much like a book haul, and that obviously it starts conversation with people like, ah, that series right there is one of my favorite series. Or, you know, hey, why do you have this on there? And I tell people, you know what? I'm always able to uh, change these things around because I wasn't planning on reading Dritz, guys, until you gave me the feedback that I needed to hear when I talked about why I didn't have time to read that right now. And I ended up moving it up above all of those in that other video. So, uh, yeah, again, never feel scared to leave a comment for me or try to convince me of something that I've said maybe I don't have plans to read or I don't have time to read. Now, I know that's going to get all the Discworld people and their <laughs> Discworld will happen eventually, guys. It's just I don't even own them, okay? So uh, that, that's, enough. that's what I'm going to use as my excuse for right now. I, I keep pushing Discworld down the road because I know people are very, very upset that I keep on uh, apparently uh, skipping over Discworld. But uh, I, you know what I've been skipping over that, that keeps getting brought to my attention is, is Earthsea. I had that conversation with Jimmy and Steve and Yolene and uh, Philip the other night, and someone actually asked me in the chat if I was ever planning to read Earthsea. That's one that I keep forgetting about, but I'm, I'm getting off task here. Next up, 9,000 views. This was Ranking Stephen King Part 2. This is 1983 through 1989. 
maybe my favorite stretch of King's career. So that was a very, very fun video to make, but also, uh, you know, I was, I was being torn and apart inside, you know, even if I was putting on the happy face on the video, uh, because you're talking about ranking, that's like kind of asking me to choose a favorite kid. You know, it's really, really tough for me, but uh, I, I have a good time doing that. I know that uh, audiences seem to love tier lists and things like that, but uh, when it comes to King, it's just something that I have always said I wasn't gonna do. Uh, was rank his book so uh, doing it slowly now it's going to be a while before part three guys because there's some of those I need to uh, reread there's even some uh, first time reads in some of there so that's going to be a series that goes for a while so I know people are already asking me about part three it's going to be a minute you know but uh, I but since I moved the Dark Tower stuff up you will be getting more Dark Tower coverage before that but I won't be getting back to the tier list uh, for a little bit but part two uh, very popular with the viewing audience here why i decided to read drist and forgotten realms i had eight thousand views and in my opinion one of the best reading excerpt introductions i've ever done i had a lot of fun doing that one and uh when you can pull quotes from a series but use them out of context because you haven't read anything uh some people feel like that's spoilery i don't think so without context i don't think very many of these it's not like the quote was like i can't believe you killed my father you know it wasn't anything like that it was you know just good good inspirational quotes i think that you can pull so uh i love doing those introductions and that was i feel like that was one of my more favorite ones but uh just uh how i basically came to decide to read that series when i really didn't have any plans to so uh yeah it was you guys you guys get the assist on that one because you did convince me to do that and i'm thankful for it because i did very much enjoy the dark elf trilogy and i'm looking uh may and june are pretty packed but i think in july i'm going to try to get in some ice wind dale and continue that series with drist and then next up eight thousand views this was my dark tower most frequently asked questions and i think i made this one because i get so many people who are like what do I got to read before I start Dark Tower? I've heard the ending sucks. Should I even bother? Uh, you know, it's, it's all kinds of questions about it. What does Kyle mean? Things like this. I felt like it was a good enough time to talk about all those things and what I think you should do beforehand, what I think you don't need to do beforehand. And really, you just you don't need to do anything. It's really supplemental stuff. If you want some things, like I talked about earlier with Insomnia, those things are kind of kind of make your run across the path of the beam a little more fun, but it isn't anything you have to do. And I address, hopefully once and for all, my feelings on the ending, since I've just gotten this reputation as someone who hates the Dark Tower's ending, you know, even though, it's, I, even though I have it listed as a top five fantasy series of all time. But uh, yeah, fun time. Anytime I can talk about the tower, more time. Anytime I can convince more people to try Dark Tower, I am going to do that because... It is great, guys, and I'm enjoying reading it with a crowd this go-around. A couple of my favorites from this month that didn't quite uh, hit these numbers. Uh, I love talking about the Star Wars EU. A big question I get as well is where should I start with the Star Wars Expanded Universe? So that's why I made that video because uh, yeah, I would love for more people to... Maybe some people like me, they're a little jaded with what Disney has done since they've gotten the license. And you want to go back to the canon that was actually canon before that, before it was decanonized when uh, Disney bought the IP. Uh, I really, it, guys, it, for me, just everything that happens after Return of the Jedi, uh, for, you know, 40 years after that in the in that, that history is just so good to me. As I said, that was my MCU. You know, every three months we had a new Star Wars book from a new author with, you know, one overarching vision. You had your Kevin Feige in the house saying, this is where the story's gotta go, but I'm gonna trust these different authors to get us there. And it just, yeah, it was a great time. It was a great time to be a Star Wars fan. And like I said, being discouraged with what Disney's done, it's made me lean even harder and say, you know what, to me, that will always be canon. And this new stuff is kind of Earth 2 for me. So uh, maybe more, more people will decide to do that. So if you're hungry for great, great Star Wars content, again, Star Wars EU is where it's at. Now, I do think that the why you should read Tolkien one will probably get better numbers than it has right now. It's just it's only been out for like five days. So uh, it wasn't going to touch. Uh, some of these have been out for the full month. But I did enjoy obviously talking about Tolkien and what makes him the best. You know, that's basically what that video turned into. You should read Tolkien because he's the best, guys. He is the gold standard of modern fantasy. So I mean, I, he's what is basically brought modern fantasy to its where it's at today. I will always say you can't get any of these stories without Tolkien laying that foundation. So yes, traditional fantasy to modern fantasy, classic fantasy to now. I think that guy is obviously going to be the basic materials needed, you know, the prerequisites for any fantasy world. And they were all started 
by the man J.R.R. Tolkien. So anytime I can talk about the man, the myth, the legend, I am going to do that. And we are going to be doing more Lord of the Rings content here very, very soon. But guys, uh, what channel goals do I have for the month of May? Uh, like I said, I feel like we're coming out of that stretch in spring that seems to kill content creators. I think it's because YouTube updates their algorithm every year. Uh, you think you got this figured out? Check this out. Uh, but I hope to keep meeting new viewers while obviously building on the relationships I built with the ones who have been here for a while. Uh, I, I love talking to you guys. That's why I started this channel. I want to be able to talk to like-minded folks who want to just talk about books. You know, that's what we want to do here is want to talk about books, what we love reading, what we love others to read, you know, just kind of passing that on. But I, yeah, I just want to continue this reading freedom. You know, that's what's allowed me to do something like say, you know what? I'm going to pick up this Dark Tower read-along that they're doing on the Discord because I've got space to do it now. So I want to be able to make sure I keep doing that, continue to try new authors. I just, you know, read R.A. Salvatore for the first time. I'm reading Bernard Cornwell for the first time right now with, uh, with Warlord Chronicles. I'm going to be reading Robert McCammon here at the end of the month with Boy's Life. So uh, just continue to broaden my horizon, guys. I mean, I know I said no more rereads, and now I'm doing the Dark Tower one, but I had always planned to do that. So King is the exception to that rule. But guys, that was the month of April for me. I want you to drop in the comments and tell me what was your book of the month? What was the best book you read in the month of April? And always, guys, there is no wrong answer. So don't be scared. If your favorite book was that new Dogman book you got your kids, that's great. I probably already read it. So drop in the comments and let me know about it, guys. And I will talk to you there.